<laughs> Hello and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogbe. You know, it's always a delight to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakman. All right, let's start from Europe. What's actually happening right there in the Champions League? And Leon continuing their reign as the champions. Again, eliminating, beating Wolfsburg 3-1 in the Champions League final to win the trophy for the fifth successive time. And of course, it's seven for them in their history. Remember this club was just created in 2004, but then wow. Leon has been dominating the Women's Champions League for like forever. Wow, what a story. That's dominance right there, Cecilia. Fifth in a row, you need to stand up for the champions. We'll talk about that one more later on on the program. Also on the show this morning, we'll take a look at what's going on right there at the NBA playoffs. What a story it was for the Boston Celtics. Cecilia couldn't wait for this match to come and it was a dominant win for the Celtics. We said they dismantled the Raptors. It ended woo, 112 to 94. Yeah, they lost by 14 points. Defending champions, JC Tatum, Marcus Smart, all the guys came to the party. And of course, the likes of, well, Van Vleck. So we're thinking Fred Van Vleck and the likes of Pascal Siakam were not just too good on the nights. But then we'll talk about that much later. We will get into it. also on the program this morning in Showtime right there at the 2020 US Open. Uh, we were contemplating if COVID-19 was going to stop this one, but it's not stopping it. Uh, some of the top guys have pulled up, but it's okay. The show will go on. And we have some of our top tennis players an action tonight. Uh, Piuskova is busy. Kevin Anderson is busy. And I also see Alexander Zverev. Yeah, they all, they all will be busy tonight. So mm. when it's the US Open gets on the way, that's the second Grand Slam Ooh. of the year. It should have been the last and the fourth one, but then it's the second Kobe, that's of the year. The of course, it's Wimbledon okay. and French Open. French Open is going to happen much later, but Wimbledon mm -hmm. is cancelled. So tennis fans can still afford to see three Grand Slams this year. At least they saw the Australian Open and then this one, and they have the French Open much later in the year. But then this is inside the bubble, yep. and of course, it's close to the fans. Mm -hmm. So they say stay in the bubble. So yes. Celia, but there's also been concerns about someone testing positive. Yeah. And if those cases keep coming, it's just going to put a dent. And I said, it might bust the bubble, you know? <laughs> but I like the fact <laughs> that we're talking morning. about the US Open. Uh, Serena Williams will play this one with everything that she's got. Of course. Uh, I mean, everyone is saying she's favorite for this one. You go. So if she doesn't win that elusive Grand Slam title to break that record, then maybe she should just take a break. And, mm, I, you know, Serena yeah. Williams is someone that always want to fight. She always so even if she doesn't win it, I pray she, she she wins anyway. Even if she doesn't win this year, but we know that she's going to continue yeah, fighting. So whenever the US Open is on, you know, particularly when Serena Williams is playing, but it's not just for Serena, Cecilia, mm -hmm. top seed. Novak Djokovic is looking for his 18th Grand Slam title. Yeah, and of course, after winning the Western and Southern Open, he's obviously favorite to win the US That's Open. Right. Rafael Nadal is under, and he said he can't play because of, you know, of course, yeah, pandemic and all that. So he doesn't want to risk a traveling yeah. and everything. Roger Federer recovering from his surgery and all that. So when you don't have those guys in, Andy Murray just back from hip injury. He hasn't played in the Grand Slam since after the Australian Open and all that. Of course, 2019, yeah, last year he won the yeah. Antwerp uh, title. Mm -hmm. So he has won a title before. Yeah. And he knows how his body is, being able to even play as a Western or Southern Open. So you wouldn't say his favorite, but at least it's someone that can give, you know, Djokovic uh, a run for his money. But outside uh, Andy Murray, there's... Um, Sister passes there. Alessandro yeah. Zerev is there. You have yeah. some of these stars that are also that have shown us that shown, they are yes, ready they to can take, it, you know, no? to do the unthinkable, team and all that, so. dominate. So it is what it is. The US Open <laughs> will get on the way uh, today in the United States of America, New York, to be precise. And we've said it's showtime. So that's what it is. The fans are not. They like the fact that we're going to have yeah. the US Open, but they're not going to be part of it. But. Uh, they can enjoy the competition from home, you know, yeah, support your team, you know. And I see some, I'm sure there must have been mm -hmm. some virtual gathering for the fans to come root for your team. If they win, like everybody will see the themselves NBA, right? celebrating. <laughs> it, it's not the same, but Cecilia is a new normal. And it's also a depleted US Open. You uh, would want to see, imagine the two defending champions, the men and women singles, they're not here. Yeah, no. I mean, you would have loved, you know, uh, Rafael Nadal to be here, yeah. uh, Andrescu Bianca for the women also to yeah. be here. What number one for women? Mm -hmm. uh, talking about Ashley, Ashley Barty, Barty, she's not here. Not so you'd have loved these players to be here. Yeah. Even Kiki Betts also. Yeah. I mean, these are stars that are not here. You'd actually love to see all of them here. Yeah, no, okay, let's go to the NBA. Yeah. Thank goodness, I mean, the whole issue has been resolved and all that. But then there's still social injustice in the US and but the players who came out to actually protest and start uh, the whole uh, sport in the US being cancelled, including NHL. They're back 
to play. And of course, we'll be talking about the results that happened last night where you have the Toronto Raptors. Well, yeah. they were able to wrap up a 4-2 series victory, which is a good one. But then, uh, at the end of the day, let's just start off with the results coming from last night, starting with the Clippers and the Dallas Mavericks. And that game ended 4-2 uh, in favor, of course, the Clippers. They needed to tie this off and get into the next round for the Denver Nuggets and the Utah Jazz. It oh. is tied. And, of Are course, you're moving it? to game yeah. seven. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, it's you, you just look at it and you're like, okay, how did this happen? You know, okay. Well, yeah, they wrap it up. The Celtics and the Raptors, which we're going to talk about. Uh, the Celtics taking game one. And for that, Nuggets and the Utah Jazz. You know, uh, Austin, you were talking about, okay, DNA tests and stuff like yeah. that and everything. Yeah. But then when you're looking for guys right now, I've told you, Jamal Murray <laughs> and, of course, yeah, Donovan Mitchell are the two guys you know you'll be testing. But yeah. before we get up to that, because we'll talk about their top performance and what they put up on the party. But then you have these guys, you know, putting up some numbers. That's I talking know. about uh, Jason Tintum mm -hmm. and uh, Marcus, Marcus Smart. Smart scoring 21 points apiece. Yeah. That's how they were able to leave the Boston Celtics to that victory over defending champions Toronto Raptors in the Eastern Conference semi-final series. And it's the opener. Uh, yeah, so it's the opener. So it's, and, and I have a record that says the Celtics they have never trailed in game one. Mm -hmm. So that's a good good record uh -huh. that they keep going for themselves. When you're playing the defending champion, you want to have it good at the start, yeah. you know? And this is a very good win, a uh, good win for them. 112 to 94, they will go back and say, guys, how can we improve on this result? Uh, so shout out to the names you mentioned, mm -hmm. Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart. They scored 21 points apiece. Apiece, yeah, for them. Kemba Walker also added 18. Jalen Brown, I mean, wasn't left. I added 17. Daniel Diaz, Robert Williams, all of them just contributed 10 and 13 each. So it's a fifth uh, straight game for them in the playoffs. Remember, uh, took out the uh, seven sixers. You know, it was a sweep for mm -hmm. them in that one. So facing defending champions, I thought this is going to be a tough one. Yeah. But then defending champs, Lasso Kyle who had the oh, best man. 17 points. Sergio Baca just 15 for the Raptors. <laughs> and Fred Van Vliet that we've been talking about. I mean, himself and Pascal yeah. Siakam just go 8 of 32 for 24 points. Wow. And you're like, how did that happen? So well, let's get the numbers tell you that mm -hmm. they didn't turn up. Yeah, they, didn't they didn't turn, turn up. up. We expected them to, to do it. And while the Celtics, they used teamwork, mm. came together and said, yeah, look, if we everyone. And that was all Everybody, for them. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. enthusiasm, clean mm -hmm. some stuff up, but then that just wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. I mean, they right. didn't play well at all. Yeah, and, okay. and that was what Kyrie said. Said, look, we we didn't we didn't play to expectations, so they need to dust themselves. That's what they can do uh, in game in two. Game two, that's important. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the guys who put up some numbers because Austin is ready to test I some can, of I'm them. Marking them. <laughs> <laughs> You're marking. Right, let's start with Kawhi Leonard. I mean, who gave that uh, victory to the Clippers? He needed to come to the party because the coach Adok Rivers even had to praise his performance because he was the one that was being good tonight. Uh, 33, 14, and seven to lead the Clippers to the semi-finals, of course, mm -hmm. uh, winning that series of 4-2. Also, look at Doncic uh, in the Dallas Mavericks where he produced some numbers just to the face right there. I mean, yeah. you don't put up 38.9 assists and 9 rebounds I mean, for the Mavericks and they lost on the ninth. I mean, it, it's just not what they expected. Then for the Clippers, of course, they are going to be waiting uh, for the winner between the Utah Jazz and Devon Nuggets <laughs> that's, that's going into Game 7. Now, this is your guy, Austin, I'm Jamal Murray, 55 yeah. and the six, and that's how they were able to tie the series, exploding for the ninth. I mean, he had 14 in the second quarter, and that turnaround around actually propelled the Devon on gets to that victory. For and sure. of course, his mate, when I mean his mate, I mean his brother that is also putting up some numbers, Donovan Mitchell, mm -hmm. 44, six, and five on the ninth. Yeah. Well, he was on the losing side this yeah. time around. So for the third yeah. consecutive time in the last two seasons, they survived mm -hmm. a game seven. I mean, they survived this game seven San Antonio Spurs last day in the first round. Yeah. And now now they are also pushing the Utah Jazz to Game Seven. Fantastic. Let's see what's going to happen if yeah. they can make it to the semifinals this time. Right? If they can, then we should be happy for that. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Jamal Murray, a uh, shout out to you, but we're coming for you. <laughs> we need to test you. Explode to a game high of 50 points to force Game Seven in that one. Uh, that has the Nuggets. Okay, let's go on this quick break. When we come back, I'm sure you know there's still so much more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Welcome back, Sports This Morning on Channels Television. We're broadcasting live from our sports center in Lagos, Nigeria. Be part of the program now as we take a look at the development of beach soccer 
in Africa. And then we're going to put Nigeria into, into that mix. Sometime in July, the chairman of Kebi Beach Soccer Association, Mahmoud Adeja, uh, was unanimously elected the president of Africa's Beach Soccer Union. That was good for Nigeria because if we have a Nigerian leading the Africa Beach Soccer Union, then it means development can just, you know, somehow creep into Nigeria's Beach Soccer. Let's go to our studio in Abuja where the president of the Africa Beach Soccer Union, Mahmoud Adeja, is standing by to speak to us. We'll take a look at survival options for beach soccer in this pandemic and, of course, how can we achieve development right here in Nigeria. Good morning, Mahmoud Adeja. Welcome to Sports This Morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, Austin. It's my pleasure to be with you once again. Awesome. Good to have you join us on the show. Congratulations, President of the Africa Beach Soccer Union. Uh, that rule, what does it come with? How much uh, should we be expecting from you as regards the development of beach soccer in, in Africa, but particularly in Nigeria? Well, uh, thank you, Austin. And uh, Africa Beach Soccer uh, Union, it's, it's a collection of uh, several stakeholders uh, across the African continent, uh, which uh, includes the uh, administrators, uh, the promoters of the game, the coaches, the players, both ex and playing, and uh, also the, the referees and uh, the technical uh, people. Uh, across the, the African continent. And uh, what we want to do is to have this uh, holistic uh, drive of uh, beach soccer in, in, in Africa so that it can prosper and also uh, take it to another, another level in partnership with the major stakeholders. Uh, basically, that is what we're, we're here to do. And uh, we, we've been engaging for some time. And uh, we felt now is about time we all come together so that we can have this... Uh, a collective uh, drive for, 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 for beach soccer in, in Africa. Yeah, obviously, uh, I mean, beach soccer in Africa is not as viable as it is across the world. Now, for you, you're the president right now. You have a lot to do in promoting the sports that you just uh, mentioned. Now, how do you make it more viable to ensure that Africa, when you're going for world competition, at least they can be contenders, not just going there to participate? Okay, it's very simple. Uh, like I said, we want to have this collective uh, drive uh, in partnership with the federations and CAF uh, across Africa. And what we want to do uh, with beach soccer is, is to push for programs and also for competitions across Africa because we've uh, realized over time that is what we really uh, lack. Uh, our counterparts in, in other parts of the world, in, in Europe and South America and Asia, for example, they have these competitions and capacity building uh, programs, uh, you know, so that uh, uh, we also here can, can, can have that, uh, that feasible development in terms of beach soccer. So you will see the Africa Beach Soccer Union pushing for these programs, doing seminars across Africa, and also supporting countries uh, which have not been in the limelight, countries like Malawi, like Burundi, uh, you know, uh, a lot of them, Gabon, uh, you know, supporting them and also seeing how we can have this uh, collective support. So programs, 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 and also uh, in support with the technical uh, aspect because we really, we really uh, lack that technical aspect in Africa, no doubt about that. Mm, sounds good. Programs, 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 and hopefully more competitions also to give beach soccer <clears throat> that awareness that it needs to have to thrive. Let's bring it back to current situation. COVID-19 has passed everything, you know. Um, but for some sporting federations, it has given them an opportunity to sit back, reflect, and think about development. What is Absu doing with this COVID-19 window? Well, just like what we've done, we've come together uh, just recently to uh, obviously uh, have a leadership uh, across Africa, which cuts uh, across countries like uh, uh, Senegal, Nigeria. Uh, in North Africa, you have the likes of Morocco, Egypt. In the east, you have uh, Uganda, Tanzania, and also in the south, you have South Africa, Seychelles, Madagascar. 
And uh, like I said, uh, we, we, we've come together and uh, we've, uh, even though the COVID-19 have uh, put a halt on, on the sports uh, uh, programs uh, across the world, uh, but we've, uh, we've made meaningful uh, progress in, 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 in Africa in terms of coming together and also set up a leadership which will uh, drive uh, beat soccer in, in, in Africa. So uh, I, I believe uh, in Africa, some countries have already resumed uh, their programs with uh, beat soccer. And very soon in, in Nigeria, we're just waiting for the, for the go ahead. We have a lot of programs that we, we, we want to push so that we can have this uh, feasible development in, in, in Africa uh, and, and Nigeria as well. You just talked about programs for Nigeria. That's when sporting uh, events resume in Nigeria, especially in uh, concert sports. Now, what are some of these uh, programs you're talking about? Does it involve competitions? And also the fact that we really don't have a uh, beach soccer league. I mean, Nigerian Football Federation have been talking about that for a while. What are you doing to ensure that maybe we have a viable league in Nigeria and start the promotion from there? Well, already we're, we're engaging the Nigerian Football Federation, and uh, in the past we've we've worked with them in Kebi. In most of the programs we've had, we've partnered the Nigerian uh, Football Federation and other stakeholders, and we've seen that uh, progression, and also in Lagos, as you know, and in, in so many other places. So immediately after this, uh, my election, I've been engaging the uh, uh, FA chairman, the Football uh, Association chairman across the states, uh, to see how we can drive this process because, uh, like I said, we want to partner uh, with them uh, also in terms of the grassroots development and we've been getting a lot of support, you know, because uh, we want to have this holistic, uh, holistic drive, uh, you know, from the states up to the national, uh, national level. And as soon as we're, we're done with that, uh, very soon we will start this league because it's, it's been long overdue, I, I, I must say. And if you, if you want to prosper and, and have that uh, development uh, across, across Africa, you, you need the leagues because that is what everyone is doing across the world. Uh, once you have the leagues and the clubs uh, coming up, it goes up to the national teams and you, you, see, you see that, uh, that impact instantly. I agree. The league, very, very, very important. Uh, but but um, um, Mr. Adedja, let's take a look at the development of beach soccer in Nigeria. I love what they are doing with the Eco Beach Soccer. It's a mini league. You are doing the same thing in Kebi. But let's put league aside. What is that one thing that we must do if we want beach soccer to thrive in Nigeria? Okay, like, uh, for example, now uh, we're engaging the uh, tertiary institutions and also the secondary schools, uh, not just in Nigeria but across Africa, so that we can have that... Uh, that uh, a grassroots uh, development and also push for competitions even at the tertiary uh, institutions uh, because we we feel that is that is really really the future for 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 the sports once once we have that across uh, across board uh, i feel everything will, will really fall in fall in place uh, like i mentioned in in nigeria uh, we've been doing a lot obviously in in the past uh, you know to to drive this uh, process and you know, uh, we just need to come together and, and have, this, uh, have this drive, uh, you, you know. And I, I, like I said, uh, we're engaging the Nigerian Football Federation. You mentioned the ECHO uh, uh, beach soccer uh, in, in Lagos, which has been ongoing for, for some time. And just recently, we, we have the Abuja tournament in, in February. And it was really, really a, a great one because... Uh, over time, uh, we've had uh, these competitions in Abuja, but it's not been consistent. And that is what we want to push across the states. Because uh, every state you, you go to in Nigeria, you have this quality sand, uh, you know, for beat soccer. And our kids, they really grow up uh, playing barefoot, uh, you know, this beach soccer. Every community you go, you see uh, our kids uh, playing uh, 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 soccer barefoot, which is really beach soccer. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the prospects are there. It's, it's just for us to have that, uh, that coll collective uh, support uh, across board. And I, I feel this is very, very possible. I'm really, really glad with this coming together of the African Beach Soccer Union. And we want the support 
of the federations and uh, and the CAF as well, uh, up to the CAF level. Uh, just yesterday, I had a very, very important uh, chat with the president of Beat Soccer Worldwide, which is the global body of Beat Soccer. And, uh, you know, he has given us uh, his full uh, endorsement of what we're doing. And he even uh, told me that uh, he's a European, but uh, his, his blood and mind is, is with Africa. And he is really in support of uh, this development. I must say thank you so much, Mr. Mahmoud Adejia, for your time. All the best. Stay focused. Keep winning. Go to the grassroots stadium. That's how we we'll develop. Thank you. Thank you once again. So that's it, President Africa Beach Soccer Union, Cecilia. Um, let's COVID get out of the way first. Of course, I think I think they have they have the something good coming. So let's see after COVID now. We won't be talking anymore. It'll be time for action. That's what it is, yeah. action. Just do the business on the field. Yeah. All right, let's go straight to the Champions League. Of course, the men's were concluded last <laughs> week, but the, for the women, it was concluded just uh, this weekend. And, of course, they also had to be in the bubble, the final eight. Mm -hmm. As you to show us, Barcelona got to semi-final, mm -hmm. but they couldn't progress past that. They lost to Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg went ahead to the final. And, of course, they lost to Leon 3-1. And whenever you have Leon, Leon and Barcelona oh. played the last final, it was 4-1. I just had scoring the only goal. Yeah. But this time around, of course, they also won the 3-1 against Wolfsburg. Yeah. And Alexandra Pop scoring the only goal. Remember Alexandra Pop? I made a German girl. She scored yeah. against her a couple of times, yeah. you know, uh, for the Super Falcons. But then these girls, I mean, they're just making history. Seven in the history. And, of course, five in a row now. And only Real Madrid that have done that. Yeah. That was far back between 56 and Silly. 1960 in the early days of European Cup. So, yeah. no other team has actually won Champions League five in a row. And shout out to <laughs> Leon because even their male team made a statement yeah. this year mm -hmm. in the in the UEFA Champions League. The women still dominant as ever. What do you think is responsible? Because investment, this uh, it's just investment and depth in the squad. I mean, although the Champions League for the women, we know that the prize, the prize means about 450000 Years so, which is really not much, but then the president of the club, what he has decided to do is whatever he's giving to the men's team, that's what he's giving mm, to the women's team. The so, quality. the training facility, everything is the same, so there's no disparity. Yeah. So, now you know why they actually perform it better. I Meanwhile, in Germany, I've heard some players talking about the fact that some of them will need to work extra to make ends meet. But yeah. these ladies in Leon, they don't they're have to do that. So they are comfortable. So that alone will give you something so if, if, extra if for most of the girls. can actually drive excellence. You Absolutely. Know? That's what yeah. Australia did with their male and female team. They say now we're going to have equal pay. Exactly. In the United States, they're still fighting it. Mm -hmm. But Leon, they don't, they don't care what's happening Nothing. with France. Yeah. It's a club business it and is. they've made it that. And we can see the results are there. It's, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we were thinking they didn't have most of their top players, their leading stars, the likes of uh, the Ballon d'Or winner 2018, uh, other Hagerberg, she wasn't fully fit. She didn't play. Nikita Paris also suspended. Amanda Henry, and there she was also no problem. not. Exactly, there was no problem. Yeah. So it, at, the, at the end of the day, it's just like you just have these girls who I, I don't know. They just have this pain within them to always want to produce results over and over and over again. And once you see Leon coming out, you know there's going to be a victory. And, and this. Yeah, and do you know what this will do? Mm -hmm. It will push other clubs now to yeah. up their game, up their investment. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Let's go on this quick break now. When we come back, the Gunners, we'll talk about Arsenal. They seem to be on a resurgence. Arsenal fans, get in here. We'll talk about your club and we'll come back. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Let's talk about Arsenal and their victory at the Community Shield. Cecilia, are you part of those persons that are saying that it's not a trophy that they should celebrate? Community Shield is just cotton razor, nothing much to it. But they should celebrate because it's against Liverpool. Yeah, so that's so why. It's against, it's against Liverpool. Liverpool. And of course, we have uh, Aubameyang, mm. Wakanda style, also giving them the trophy. Now, this guy loves scoring at Wembley. Yeah. Semi finals, finals, and Community Shield, all so at it's, Wembley. It's, in that's what it, Aubameyang scored a superb goal. Cecilia, we need mm -hmm. to put that out there. Said the record straight was a superb goal. And Build up from and, the back. Yeah. And also scored the winning penalty as Arsenal beats Premier League champions Liverpool in the community shield. It was an empty Wembley Stadium. Of course. But the Gunners don't care. They took the shield. And I saw that clip where Obama Young had to strap up the, 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 the community <laughs> shield uh, trophy. He strapped it up so it doesn't fall. You know, the one for the FA Cup dropped when he was trying to lift it. <laughs> Let's go to look at could uh, Arsenal top fan is standing by to talk about the resurgence of God. What does the community shield mean for them? This new season. Kelechi, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning, Kelechi. I think as a wonderful community shield, I see Arsenal fans celebrating it. Is that the sort of push that we need as we get into the new scene? 
Yeah, I mean, we've seen a result just under Michel Arteta. Um, we've seen Arteta ball. Uh, Mayans goes to the center of his goal against the Man City. So, Wembley in the semi final, passing out from the back, switching very quickly to um, a right winger who then, you know, switches wing into him to score. So, it seems like a pattern is looping. And um, it's a moment we are playing a back three, but um, I think we probably switch to a back four with this making. But um, it's good signs, and we are happy. We are happy to leave the, uh, the sorry, the community shield. And um, <laughs> anyway, it's up. <laughs> it's a good one because I mean we're happy that Obama Young actually stayed. I mean he's gonna of course uh, so, yes, uh, and everything <laughs> since the start that first game is gonna be against Fulham. And we heard some of the players saying that that's not happens to the team that can finish in top four in the coming season. But the game at Fulham in the opening game is gonna be September eleventh. We determine I mean, if they've done this particular momentum. You think is a team that can actually finish in top four judging by the way church into the market of buying everybody buyable and design more. And we have Manchester City of course are uh, competing and Liverpool uh, also will want to have the same that Yes, I think uh, we'll do uh, I think, uh, a few bats, so we shouldn't destroy them um, before the moment. If you look at Chelsea, for me, I think they're beginning to buy two players. They are very good players, I get that, but I don't really see how they're going to gel. You know, it's, and it's just a short uh, turnaround for everybody, so watch them and see how they gel. But we made a few signings where we need them, like William, who might be playing number 10 for us, who strengthen the defense as well, um, if party comes to it. So um, I think we are going to rent well, we're still in the match with you, a couple of then after that, the season starts. This season is very important. Um, the game is very important. It's a, it's a ground that we win every time. Hopefully, um, that will continue. Mm. Let's talk about Aubameyang. Uh, Mikel Arteta says he's convinced Aubameyang will stay at Arsenal. Do you think he will stay? Yes, also, I think he will stay. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak to the brother and father when we're, after the game that day. And um, with the advice they give him, I think he's going to stay. Oh, you want to go to Arsenal? Messi is trying to run away. Players, <laughs> yeah. It, there's nobody remaining. So just stay here. You, yeah, he's the captain. He's the, he has lifted two trophies in one month. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Kelechi, Kelechi, if Obama was your brother, younger brother, <laughs> will you stop him from going to Barcelona if they come? Yes, because there's nothing in Barcelona again. He's an agent for They're not going again. You understand? I don't know who Miracle is going to do. I like Barcelona personally, but with, uh, with no trouble there, the election tomorrow, they are it's too much. It's just too much. The problem. I'll ask you this question like, again. I'll ask you again when you take off that snap jersey. <laughs> no, it's not now. To be honest, I think they've given him, I think it's 250,000. So, said they are broke too. Like, also, I don't see what happened there. I think we're going to get it. So, I think it's the same one. Sometimes you have to consider family reasons. Not down to France, it's two hours by train. Or if you want to fly, his family's in France. So, every day, let's stay in London and enjoy his uh, drive. His food and everything. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, we know the reason why you want him to stay because it's like that's open air. Arsenal will just be nowhere. That's what it's like right now. Semi-finals, final of the FA Cup. And of course, we've seen his exclusive community shoot. So he's, it seems to be he's the man right now for Arsenal. Once he leaves, I mean, there's nothing. Like you're having him leaving Barcelona and it'll be nothing. No, no, people will step. That's the beauty of football. People will step. I remember going to Chelsea last season and he won the Hailey record at Crystal Palace and we were all scared. But people like Martinelli step up. That's the way of football. That's the beauty. Somebody will step definitely. That's the way it works. So if he goes, <laughs> I respect that. He's 31, maybe he wants to win. We're not in Champions League, we're in Champions League. You can understand that he has uh, paid his price, uh, overpaid. Uh, you, re you respect his decision, but I think he will say. Okay. I, I love this new confidence <laughs> from Kelechi. <laughs> oh, please, good. Uh, see how now your man, you can talk well now. Kelechi, I can't tell you. I don't know how you people. <laughs> because if you have back up, Spanish back up, back up, all the are trophies, then the English one is not trophy. I don't know for you, for me, for me, trophy. Oh. Uh, thank you. Kelechi, thank you so much for your time this morning. All the best to you and your team as you get ready for the new season. Thank you. Bless. All right, I'm Kelechi and Ekude. That's my fans. So, as some fans get a conversation, go talk to us on Twitter, chat underscore sports. So, this research is on with Mikel Ateta. Do you think the team can sustain it? Talk to us. See there. Yeah, obviously, they can sustain it. Uh, just go to papers. Are you read on tweet? No, no, no. Papers first. Okay, uh, just look at complete sports here. Complete sports, what do we have? Trust, Econ, Olaino, market value drops. That's what this is saying this morning. And of course, La Liga was Messi 700 million euros. Battle of Laws still active because uh, the rebel at time fails to report well. for testing. That's what complete sports is saying uh, this money. Now he's not a rebel. I mean, this guy has so much. I think people need to be. I mean, give him some credit. That's why the message they are talking about right now. He wants there. to go, let him go. Front page of the Sporting Sun before I read um, a tweet or two. He allowed guns for Man U Award. Louis Germany's Footballer of the Year. Of course, that's our World Footballer of the Year, actually, after for COVID 19. La Liga blocks Messi's move. Barca star skips COVID 19 tests. Hey. 
Let's hope he's just fine. We need to turn him. Suffers nasty collision yeah. right there in South Africa. That's on the front page of the Sporting Life. And the final one, Sporting Life. That's Sporting Sun. Sporting Life is the final one this morning. You have a Gerard Wons or Ibu Feet. That's the game they're playing against Dundee later. Uh, uh, your agent reveals no pressure on no semen. That's coming from his own agent. And of course, you also have Akme here, you know, the yeah, picture yeah. of him scary. You know, on the ground. Just Ooh. really scary. It was uh, the game against Bidvest and Kaiser Chiefs that they lost one year. That's where he got yeah. injured. So okay. our prayers are with him yeah. this morning. Yeah, uh, get well soon. Um, Daniel Akpain. Let's go to Twitter now. Take some of your tweets before we leave the studio. A swab bomb. Jonathan said, Good morning. Good morning to you too. Arsenal deserve that win and thanks to Obama Young. African power right there. But I believe that Manchester City will win this league, then Liverpool, Chelsea, and United are second, third, and fourth. Mm, okay. <laughs> Ufawara Boston says, Arsenal is certainly on the upward trajectory. As us as Ateta uh, started figuring out all the missing pieces with two silverware in the space of one month, the Gunners are definitely in for a, for a shout for the top four. So one person says they won't make it, another answer they will make it. We'll That's see. balance right there. That's balance. It's fine. <laughs> right. So we got to go now. Yeah, we need to leave the studio right now. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. Bye for now. Okay, let's do this again tomorrow. But until then, I'm Austin O'Connor. And in everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now.